Hello, my name is Joseph Fire, and this is my book review for Biomental Issues with Lobby Lovely. So, for my book review, I have decided to read Storms of My Grandchildren by James Hansen. Um, this is a book that is mostly about climate change and Mr. Hansen's findings on climate change and how what we can do to stop it. So, to begin with, I'll just start with a little breakdown of the title, uh, Storms of My Grandchildren. So pretty much the storms that he's talking about is um, climate disasters and more extreme storms that will be caused through climate change, um, like hurricanes, droughts, intense rain. Um, it's kind of stuff on both ends of the spectrum. Um, and then the grandchildren, he's speaking about pretty much my generation and the generation after me um, because we're the ones who are pretty much going to have to deal with most of the problems that have been coming up. And he relates a lot back to his two-year-old grandson. Some background on James Hansen. Um, he's one of the most famous climate change researchers um, pretty much since the 1980s. <coughs> Excuse me. He, from 1981 to 2013, he was director of the NASA Goddard Institute of Space, in, of Space Studies in New York. Um, he enjoyed studying planetary atmospheres, which will be important later on. And in 2006, he was actually voted one of the 100 most influential people by Times Magazine in 2006. He currently works at Columbia University and is the head director of climate studies. Um, has sat in front of Congress and given testimonies numerous amount of times since 1980s. Um, I think it just kind of shows uh, just how reputable he is in this line of work and um, how respected he is by his peers. So I'm basically just going to talk about the first few chapters to begin with because um, it kind of sets the tone for the whole book. Um, and anything after the first few chapters is mostly just a bunch of stats, statistics, what we can do to stop or slow down climate change. So chapter one um, through chapter three, he was assigned, along with two other scientists, to discuss climate change matters to the uh, Climate Task Force, which was put together by the president at the time, who was George Bush. This is in 2001. Uh, this consisted of cabinet members, and this was around the time that President Bush was not going to sign into the Kyoto Protocol, which was a uh, protocol that was going to reduce emissions from most major countries that had been put out in the 90s. And this is where Mr. Hansen quickly understood that where, what he was putting forth was not going to get him anywhere because politicians believe what they want to believe and they, they take information that they want to hear and they twist it and make it so it's right for them. So at the time, he was reporting his findings to Dick Cheney as well. And Dick Cheney and President Bush were very big on pushing fossil fuels to be burned and wanting more and more production, while obviously his climate change committee or his task force was put together to help limit the use of fossil fuels and decrease it to a level that would be sustainable for the, uh, for the planet. Um, this is also where I learned that lobbyists control pretty much everything that politicians want to hear. Money talks way more than science will ever talk, especially the politicians. And he was pretty much told in this, um, in this meeting that he, that him and his scientists were just using climate change to achieve more funding and get more money from the process, which was obviously incorrect. As, as I've read in this book, Mr. Hansen is very, very... Um, passionate about his work and just wants to see change. So I'm going to get into some analysis real quick on the book. Um, so as I stated earlier, James Hansen is a very reputable, re reputable source on this topic and has done numerous research on it for 40 years. Throughout the book, he uses figures and graphs rather than only statistics to help the reader visualize what he's saying and what is actually going on. Not much mumbo-jumbo. He's very direct and straight to the point. Doesn't really beat around the bush. He gets his point out quickly and wants you to understand it. 
This is definitely a collegiate level book. He uh, uses a lot of vast majority of big terms, scientific jargon. Um, but when you do get to those complicated terms and those um, those complicated spots, he helps you define and helps you understand what he's talking about, which is very nice. He makes it very easy to read the book. Um, he's also a very easy guy to relate to and sympathize with as you go throughout the book. The way he talks about his family and the way he cares about the planet is very easy to see. It's very nice to, to read about, actually, because I've read some of the books before where it's all just straight to the point, all facts, kind of no background, and um, he does a good job of laying out his life. Um, like I said very clear earlier that he is passionate about the topic and just wants his findings to be appreciated. He wants to be respected by the politicians he's posing his work to. He's very respected by the people he works with, but he wants to be respected by the people that he's trying to put his work forward to. Um, the book flows from chapter to chapter, even though it can be tough to read in some spots, and it does jump around from the 1970s to about the 2010s, but it's easy to keep up with, and he, he, makes, it, he makes it easy to read. He also provides excerpts of his work that he had submitted to Congress from, like I said, 1980 to early 2000s, um, and he also provides context of what he believes needs to happen, what needs to change. Um, I'm not going to go into all that because it is very extensive, but he does provide his work submitted and what we could do to stop and help slow down. Um, one of the things I really like about Mr. Hansen is, yes, he is optimistic that we can slow down the process and help the planet in the long run, but he's also a realist with who he's dealing with, and he understands that these politicians are very difficult to work with and do not really accept the scientific method because politicians go off bias in what they want to hear. And when you use the scientific method, you have to be unbiased and unopinionated and be able to just take the evidence and the facts and put together and look at it that way. And that's something that politicians can't really do because they're influenced either by money, they're influenced by the people around them, that their political party, especially in the U.S., um, which has become, climate change has become kind of a political thing where one side believes the other and one side doesn't, which is very weird. <laughs> I just, I don't understand that. Um, but he understands it's difficult to get the majority to agree with him. So I'm going to move on to some main points that I've learned, which is there are quite a few. Um, probably the most prevalent point, which is something that I probably didn't learn, but he made it very clear to me, that greenwashing, which is the process of politicians coming out, putting a smile on their face and saying, we're all going to create change, we're all going to do this and do that, and then not actually doing anything about it and just continuing to do this whole process of pretending like they're going to do something. Um, USA, Russia, China, and India are the biggest players in this game right now, and they are the four major countries that we need to kind of rally together and spearhead the operation. The UK was a very big player in it um, in the middle 1900s, um, like 1950s and stuff during the Industrial Revolution. But ever since about the 1980s, 1990s, they've actually been one of the countries on the mission to help slow this down. And even in the, um, the committee that's going on right now, COP26, which I've been paying a lot of attention to, the um, Boris Johnson has been very clear with his, with his country's route to the top and trying to, trying to push this very, very much, which is good to see because my family is actually English. Um, and then some things I've learned with actual fossil fuels is that coal is the dirtiest and the, actually the worst one of all. And if we want to slow down this process of climate change, we need to stop coal production. And obviously oil and gas production is going to continue, but we can regulate that and we can slow that down while coal just needs to be stopped being used altogether if we want some change. Um, now this is something that I've had known, but he makes it very clear is that policymakers find loopholes in their own policies for companies to continue doing what they're doing and kind of get away with the regulations and just meet the standard if not um, kind of almost breaking the rules, but not breaking the rules at the same time. 
some some things that he believes that we need that we need to do to help slow down this process is increasing the prices of oil, gas, kind of the fossil fuels, increasing those prices a lot, putting heavy taxes on them, and then redistributing those taxes back to the people, um, which he believes at the same time, while increasing those taxes for fossil fuels, we need to decrease the prices of clean energy, like solar panels on houses, electric vehicles, um, to help speed up the process and get people on board with it. And so he, like I said earlier, he worked for NASA for 40 years. And this is something I was quite disappointed to learn about, but NASA is very political and they're very government oriented. And if they have people working for them that aren't really coinciding with their beliefs or with what the government wants to believe, they will inhibit their work and kind of hide their work, which is what happened to Mr. Hansen for plenty of years. His work was, was almost hidden by NASA. And this is actually why he left in the early 2010s, because he, he was getting fed up with his work going nowhere and how the company he'd worked for for 30, 40 years was almost hiding his work from people finding it. Um, and this is actually one of the most interesting things I like to learn about is he relates Earth to Venus quite a bit throughout this book. And this is because Venus had an atmosphere almost like Earth's with plenty of water within the within the planet. And this is this is a very long time ago, but had a, had water on the planet, had an atmosphere like Earth's. But over time, the atmosphere almost started to deteriorate and this caused a massive greenhouse effect. Um, with a huge increase of greenhouse gases on Venus, and it's made it presumably unlivable. And it's it is just a big planet with numerous storms. They have the they have that huge they have that huge ongoing storm on the planet, um, and he believes Earth is pretty much going down this same path. If we continue on how we are, Earth is going to pretty much turn into Venus, where it's just going to be a just a pit of greenhouse gases and massive hurricanes and storms and just destruction. The three big sources of global warming would be the ice sheets melting, which causes the oceans to rise, and then the world's use of energy sources. And this is a very important topic. We can't stop climate change. We can't stop it. It's a natural occurrence that we have just progressed greatly, but what we can do is slow it down. So there's no stopping, only slowing down. And just a little top, just a little tidbit that I want to end off on is, I mean, we have a perfect environment to live in on Earth. We have all, we're just the, the perfect distance away from the sun. We've got the perfect atmosphere. We've got water. We've got plenty of food, but we are destroying it. And we're going to lose it if we don't act now. And it is my generation and it's the generation before me that needs to act fast, but it's also the people in power that need to do something. And it's quite disappointing because we almost feel powerless. I know this is about three minutes longer than it should be, but I hope you've enjoyed my book review. Have a good day. So this book, Storms of Our Grandchildren, is definitely a book that I would recommend to anyone trying to get a deeper dive into the statistics and what's happening to our planet and what we could do to stop it. Highly recommend it. James Hansen was a fantastic author in his production and the way he lays forth the book. Very easy to read, easy to comprehend, um, and any spots that do get difficult, he helps you out. So this is definitely a book that I would recommend for anyone trying to learn more about climate change.